David, you are live, Mr. Dillman. Hey, welcome to the Galveston Bay Fishing Show, live from Eagle Point Fishing Camp, sunny, or partly sunny, <laughs> San Leon, Texas. Whoa. Finally, folks, we are getting a little bit of break in the weather. The sun is trying to peek out through the clouds. And after last night's deluge of rain, I think myself in Galveston, we recorded some places, it's recorded eight inches, they said. My house alone in Jamaica Beach probably had about four and a half. And uh, downtown Galveston flooded a little bit, but it always does. And then Eagle Point received a bunch of rain last night from what I heard. But everything's clearing up. Sun's out. Welcome, Eric. Glad you could finally make it. Absolutely. So, Eric's been like on a little bit of a vacation. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> work trip. Work trip. Eric went on a work trip to Jamaica. So, <laughs> what a work trip, right? Had a hard life. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> now, welcome back to the Galveston Bay Fishing Show, where we talk about Galveston Bay and fishing. And, of course, y'all know Captain David Dillman. I'm Eric. And, yes, we were not able to do the show in Jamaica. We tried to do the show in Jamaica. My, <laughs> they my, did not. <laughs> my wife and I were on a work trip for her business. And she I didn't see many work pictures, but well, anyway. She, she actually was rewarded. I'm very proud of her. She was rewarded in her business. She has a business which she sells beauty and nutritional products. And she was rewarded for her hard work, a trip to Jamaica. In Jamaica, we had business meetings and these sorts of tra training activities. <laughs> <laughs> He but did. I saw some pictures, but we they were working. We tried to do the show, but one thing I learned, if you go to Jamaica in the future, don't, you know, get all relied, uh, what's the word for that? Don't rely on the internet. Yeah, the Wi-Fi there is a little lax. Very sketchy at best. Yeah. But in any event, while I was on a work trip in Jamaica, David was tending to his house, and so... In any event, we hated to miss last week, but we really didn't have a whole lot going on last week. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we've seen and what it looks like going into this weekend and next week. And without further ado, David, go ahead and go ahead so, and start off the show. Last couple of weeks, of course, I've been busy between my mom and then, yeah, I would remodeled my house. So kind of still in the process of putting everything back together. But... The last two weeks, I mean, the weather's probably dictated everybody's fishing, and people realize that, man, we've been under some crazy weather the last two weeks. We've had scattered catches of trout and redfish and some flounder coming in, but nothing really consistent just due to the weather and actually the lack of fishermen. So we couldn't, it's hard to gauge what's been actually going on. People are catching fish. Fish are being caught. I fished um, last Friday. It, you know, south of here and caught some fish. So there's fish to be caught. It looks like, Eric, finally the weather's going to give us a break. The Trinity River's been running, y'all. So last week, Trinity River got up to about 90,000 90, cubic feet per second, which comes out of the back of Trinity Bay. They cut it down, like yesterday was down to about 40,000. So every day it's getting cut down. So the release from the dam or from the rivers coming down a little bit more, but the back of Trinity, the damage has been done. And so, which actually sets us up pretty well on this side of the bay. You checked the salinity and that was? Yeah, the salinity a couple weeks ago, as we've talked about on the show, was at around 18, 19, 20. And then today the salinity was at 14. Which typical, we've had a east wind, which pushes the water, come across our side of the bay. So it's mixing with the salt, so of course the salinity is going to drop a little bit. But now this weekend's calling for a north wind tomorrow, 5 to 10. And then the wind goes out of the west, southwest, northwest Monday. So it's variable the next three, four days, which actually sits well for our side of the bay. The fish coming out of the Trinity River. Here's the mouth of the river, y'all, right up here if you look at this map. And as all this has been flushed, all the rainwater from, from Lake Livingston's come down into Trinity Bay. It runs down that east shoreline around Smith Point and then out. 
as we pull these northeast winds, they've kind of mixed, come across, but now we're into a pattern of where we're going to start pulling a northwest wind like today, which sets us up on this side of the bay for an excellent weekend. I think we'll see some really, really good catches coming from Red Bluff, Seabrook, Kima, back between here and April Fool Point. So looks like we're going to be sitting good. Yeah, so north, south, east, west. As David said, they're calling for a northwest west wind. So we're going to be looking at a wind like this, like this. And then on Sunday, David, a southwest wind, which will be like this. So like David says, all in here, Texas City Dyke, Dollar Point, Dollar Reef, Moses Lake, Floodgate, April Fool Point, right here in Dickinson Bay, the sweet spot we like between April Fool Point and Eagle Point. All in here, you're going to have protection. It ought to be phenomenal. This is what we've talked about. Finally, if the weather person is right, we're going to have some calm calm days calm days after a little bit of a front blowing through and i'm going to be fishing and so today you're, you're taking me and fishing. i'm going to be taking him fishing lucky me <laughs> today <laughs> wendy came went out today do you have the catch i have the catch we'll show them the catch in a little bit but wendy captain wendy did go out this morning he went out with three quarts of live shrimp and they caught 20 trout two limits of trout two limits of trout. but but share with you know the listeners the viewers on what he did and and how he got on the fish well protected he, water he protected water so we were pulling a west northwest wind which comes this direction so captain wendy running a smaller boat he got a shrimp here he probably fished around the clear lake area knowing wendy wendy's pretty savvy he's not going to get in the open water with the boat he's running and if I was a adventurous man, I would say he caught them from the HLP spillway, which is up the road from us, to the Seabrook Flats. HLP spillway. You mean the park? The old park. The old park. Bayshore Bay Park. Bayshore Park. So the old spillway, the HLP plant, which is now closed down, and all the way back up towards Seabrook. This is Bayshore Park, and out in front of Bayshore Park, they put in an artificial reef back in roughly it was may may june they were so that. may june they put in a big reef right here it's not on the map but this big reef that they put in should be putting out some nice fish here possibly this fall this fall if not this fall definitely next right. spring but the main thing is that getting this west wind the water's going to clear up it's going to be very protected it should be very calm and there should be a good bite. Yep, it should really, really be good considering the last few weekends we haven't had any kind of a weekend to really fish. And, you know, I would still say live bait, live shrimp's the number one choice, no doubt about it. So if you want to catch them, I would say definitely take. I'm taking live shrimp tomorrow, I can guarantee that. Our bait boat, one of the bait boats that we have working, they had some nice production out here in front of the marina catching shrimp so we have a great supply of live shrimp we have a great supply of live croakers and what's interesting dave is that the shrimp boats are not having to go far to catch shrimp i wonder why well it's what we were talking about that push of fresh water pushed everything on this side of the bay so that's what we're looking at we're looking typically and this is really strange. So you really start fishing this side of the bay like later November. Middle of November, later November, the fish will make a move. See, I was fishing back here, catching fish back here, but that's done. So then the fish will start making a move come November all through here. And then they'll get pushed in the middle of November around Sylvan Beach, Red Bluff, Seabrook. But it's going to be early. It's going to start now. And I think that's what Wendy found out by just going today with the with the fish he caught, and he caught them pretty quick from what I, from what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. It was like not a problem for him to go catch 20 trout. No telling how many he caught and released to. Or he just quit, I mean, I don't know. But he sent us a picture with a nice box of fish. Now, Galveston area, 
We talked about it. We talked about it. They're catching flounder in the harbor, which I say Galveston. I tell Eric, hey, they're catching them in the Galveston Channel. And Eric goes, where's the channel? From Pelican Island to Seawolf Park. There's a big channel that runs back okay. through there by Texas A&M with a cruise ship stock. And there's docks in there where they pull ships in and dock. And you can go inside those docks and you can fish. And typically they'll get back up in the back corners of those flounder this time, right now. They're piling in there now. Typically, people wait a little late till it gets colder, and then they think, oh, the flounder runs on. Well, it's cold or not. The flounder runs on, and it's on now. And if you're not fishing for them now, you may miss it, because I think in the middle of November, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty positive come November the 15th, the limit drops to two. Now, listen, it's my mistake, but I got a picture two weeks ago that David took down on the fish cleaning table, and... I'm just telling you, we're telling you just so you're notified, this doesn't apply to this weekend because the wind is going to be, as we've already talked about, out of the west. But a couple weeks ago, guys, a group of guys that David knows caught limits of flounder over here. So the reason we're saying is the flounder. The had, flounder runs we, we, we talked about this about two, three weeks two ago. Two or three weeks ago. So we're now hearing, we're seeing they were on the fish cleaning table big flounder yeah catches so, a flounder so it's happening down. if you like flounder you want to catch flounder you want to eat flounder right the you action started you're allowed five right now so the limit's five and then november the 15th the limit drops to two so you want to if you're a flounder fisherman don't wait till that limit drops to two go out there and get them now uh david we've got a couple of things jason captain jason hello wish you were here buddy and hopefully we see you this weekend. And then Brian Mays, my great friend from high school, hell of a high school linebacker. He says hello. Hey, Brian. I, I probably met him before. Even though he doesn't come down and see us very often, one of these days, Brian, when you're not working so hard, come down. Did he ever fish. come to one of your parties here at Eagle Point in high school? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and we have a question from Merritt. Merritt's asking about the bait that we would suggest maybe a couple ways that you would fish for flounder. And we actually talked about that merit on one of our shows, I believe it was three, three weeks, weeks ago. ago. I would highly suggest you watch that entire show, but let's cover that briefly. Sure, so catch them on shrimp. Flounder do eat shrimp. People go, oh, I don't wanna fish shrimp for flounder. Early in the year like this, when the flounder run first starts and there's still a bunch of shrimp in the bay that are leaving, I mean, the, the flounder will eat a live shrimp bounced on the bottom. Well, bounced on the bottom, but also, Merritt, if you, if you allow your cork to- Sit right on the bottom. Sit on the bottom. Don't try to fish it shallow, fish it deep. And the current's moving, it's going to take your shrimp along that bottom in a way that's basically perfect for a flounder. This is actually different than how we would suggest fishing for a trout. So that's why the question is a great one. If you want to see about those flounder, go ahead and deepen up the cork. If there's a current running, let it work in that current. And then when you see the cork, Bob kind of squat. It hey, squats. don't do anything crazy. In the video three weeks ago, we talk about give it 10 seconds, 7 seconds, 15 seconds. Everyone has their, their amount of time. They like to wait. So with the cork, you can go ahead and hopefully wait for the flounder to take it down completely or just wait that, that 8, 9, 10 seconds and then give it, a, give it a little jostle and see if you can hook them. Right, and a lot of times they'll take that cork, like Eric, like here's a cork, and they'll just squat it right barely below the surface because you're already on the bottom. Just let them sit there and eat it, give it a good jerk, reel it in. Because Merritt, they don't have anywhere really, the flounder doesn't really have anywhere to go with the cork. That's why the cork squats. The, the flounder's not going to run, per se, and then take that cork down. It's a different, it's a different fight, if you will. Right. And now, the other way we talked about is... Live croakers. You've got, we keep small live croakers, so you can come, and we have actually a lot of guys from Louisiana get these small live croakers. And so this is something that Captain Wendy started about three years ago. So you can go with a small live croaker, 
And then the other way to do it is tell them how you do the the lure. And so, like golf we, with the you can tandem rig a. I I like Stony. I like Stony says, and I I agree with Stony. Stony says he loves his old shrimp tail, red red with red a white and white tail. shrimp tail. I like, agree yeah. with Stony. I mean I do, but hey, look, they but, will eat a pink chartreuse golf. They but, will eat a golf. But like what Stony's saying, you can get a shrimp tail, and then. You can have the shrimp tail in front and the bait in the back, or you can have the bait in the front and the shrimp, shrimp tail, tail in the back. The so back. talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the, basically the like lead head bit. jig acts as the weight. So the lead head, you bounce it along the bottom and you have a trailer with either a live shrimp, a live mullet, live croaker, whatever kind of live natural bait you want to use, live mudfish, and just let that lead head be your weight and then just slowly cast out, drag it across, bump it across the bottom. Passes, drains, um, man, the Galveston Channel up against the boat docks in the Galveston Channel. I mean, along the pilings there. You, I mean, some of the best fishing you'll have. And then the other thing is, if you don't have a boat, or if you do have a boat, and you just would like to give your best chances of catching flounder, you can go to 18th Street Pier. You can go to 18th Street Pier. What's the pier? We always forget the name of the pier over here. The oh, God. Pine Gully Park. Pine Gully Park. Correct. You can go to Pine Gully Park. You can go out the, down by Moses Lake, off the side of Moses Lake, the channel right there. Eh. I'll give you a eh. Here's a sleeper. But, but, no, what I'm saying is, if you go to the pier, then you can fish for the flounder the way I, I the did when I was a kid. And so... All you do is you walk down the pier with your rod down in the water. You have very little line out. The, the line is just basically to the bottom. And you walk down and you bring it right by those pier pilings. And then when you feel the thump, when you feel just that, like that, you give it the 10 second count or the 15 second count. And you can use live shrimp. Or, like Stoney was saying, the little shrimp tail. Shrimp the, tail. You know, what we used right. to call in the old days the Kelly Wiggler. Kelly Wiggler. Yeah, they still make them. So, and that is extremely productive on a pier. A couple sleeper areas that some people may know about, some people don't. If you drive to Galveston. Ben says hi. Tell Ben hello. Hello, Ben. If you drive to Galveston at the 51st Street Bridge, which is the bridge going over to Pelican Island, you can actually park on the side of the road and walk down the side of that bridge into a little area there, and they are lined up right now catching flounder. I've seen them there a week ago doing it, and it's a little sleeper area. Locals know about it a lot, and they fish down there, and they fish along there, and they catch a bunch of flounder. And so. then, as Merritt's saying, Merritt, we have at times used mud minnows in Galveston Bay, and there are, well... I stand corrected. There used to be bait camps that carried mud minnows. I don't know. Maybe maybe they still do. Maybe some Dave. Do. Uh, maybe Dave. There's maybe Dave Freeman yeah. uh, from from uh, Boyd's could say if they're carrying mud minnows. But mud minnows, we haven't carried mud minnows that often because mud minnows are kind of a a, a pain. Um, they they just haven't been the easiest bait to carry and. In, it's in, the consistency of catching. Yeah, in, in what we call quality, you know. So we we've tried to do mud minnows a couple times, and to get good quality mud minnows just has not been that easy. And then and then to provide that to you, it, it just was it just well, hasn't been good experience. Yeah. So kind of like I mean, it's kind of like having mullet, keeping even finger mullet for the guys that carry finger mullet. Just like finger mullet. It's a um, you get some like this yeah. and some like that. It's not like it's not like a commercial shrimper goes out and catches finger mullet or a, like they do with can, can do with croakers and shrimp. It's an individual going out to the ditches, going out to areas that they know they can catch them. They catch them if they treat them well and take care of them before they get to the camp. They're good and hardy. If not, the camp buys them. <laughs> And they may buy a hundred dozen and wake up in the morning and they have 30 dozen. That, that, ha that happened so, a couple winters ago. Yeah, it was a bad experience. It's a hard deal. 
in the mud minnows are just inconsistent on the size, and that's probably the biggest problem. And inconsistent on where the guys can catch them, because a guy, like I said, a regular guy goes out with the cast net or sits some mud minnow traps, and he may have set 30, 40 traps hoping to catch, hey, yeah, I'm going to bring you some mud minnows, but then he calls you up and he goes, I got 15 dozen. It's just, it's hard deal. It's it just deal. doesn't work. South Louisiana, when I was in, at LSU, South Louisiana, they had really high quality mud minnows, and we fished a lot with mud minnows. But I haven't seen, we haven't and been able to get the bios. We haven't been able to get that kind yeah, of quality. If yeah. we could get that kind of quality. So I just wanted to answer that question because we have a lot of people ask about mud minnows. Right. Now, if our deal is croakers, we're still got croakers and we have plenty, plenty good supply of black shrimp. So, but it looks like, Eric, this weekend's it, man. I mean, we've been waiting for this for. Yeah, Ben, we bet six we, weeks. We, we, better see, <laughs> we, we better see Ben Inlet down here. Yes, <laughs> I think Ben's coming down. I think he'll be down here. No, uh, the main thing is is that if if this is a weekend that you can get your boat out, this could be a two trip weekend. Yeah, it's one of those weekends where you're gonna want to go out. Hey, look, sun's bright and shiny. So if you if you can get out on Saturday and Sunday, this might be a back to back day. I'm thinking it's gonna be really nice. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to go Saturday and Sunday. I got a feeling I'm gonna be fishing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I got a feeling that's my my schedule is gonna be, but so, it should be good. Let's cover the the shrimping. You know, we like to give you a commercial shrimping update. That's something that a lot of you don't have much exposure to the commercial shrimping still has been great and why I think that you should have a small interest in that is that gives you an idea of the health of the, the health of the bay as as some of you have heard us talk about and will continue to talk about uh, to a certain degree is that's really something that's important to us at Eagle Point is the health of our bay the current state, uh, the past, the future, and basically how our bay's being taken care of. And there's some things that just, you know, human beings just can't destroy. I mean, there's just certain things that, that, that are just going to be good and bad, and that's just how it is. And right now is one of those, t one of those times where the bay's just, bay's, just been, bay's been really good this year as far as shrimp shrimping. has been really, really good, really consistent. The guys aren't going out there struggling to catch them basically so our supply of live shrimp is really good so i mean it's good to see this much shrimp still in the bay this time of yes year right and sometimes you'll hear us get on a little bit of a negative trend of the bay is not being taken care of like it should and then sometimes you'll hear us get on a positive trend and then this is one of those deals when we talk about shrimping and like what it's been like the last three months it's it's been good. It's it's been a good year. So we're excited about that. And then oyster season, we are told is going to open, and that will be November first. And so if you have any questions about oystering, how oystering's done, we we're going to have a we are going to have an oyster <laughs> show. We, we already have, found the person. We're going to have a show about oystering, and so some of y'all that might put you to sleep. And then others, you might just be into it big time, and you might get all fired up about it and have you know get have some questions. I think if you're a fisherman, it's going to be one of those must show watches that you got to watch the show because the oysters relate directly to the health of our bay system. Yeah, and our fishery. Well, my grandfather knew a lot about oysters. He transplanted oyster reefs, and so it goes back. Uh, deep in our heritage and we're a big believer in you need oyster reefs you need a lot of them and you need them big wide and deep and so and healthy and healthy so we'll talk a little bit about that and then certainly if you have any other questions certainly send us those questions and we'll be glad to cover them and then david why don't you go ahead and wrap things up a little bit what else you got really um that's i mean basically eric that's it i mean it's been one of those it's been a tough two three weeks y'all the weather has not really cooperated i can't remember the amount of rainfall we've had in the six week period i mean can you as much as it rained and inconsistent with the weather 
I mean, I think Galveston broke a hundred and something year old record on yeah. rainfall in September. And then we went into October thinking, hey, everything's looking up. And then all of a sudden we get more rain and more rain and more rain. And then a northeast wind. And then what? We get a hurricane, hit Florida, mm -hmm. tides come up, and they've been up for two and a half weeks now. Mm -hmm. And not really dropped to even a normal tide level. And so this little bit of a west, northwest wind will definitely decrease the tides, which will help the fish really start to get bunched up. So Well, we, we'll, we'll, we'll get back into some of the thoughts that are going through my head right now. And that is, you know, we, we know that that show's coming where we talk about like fishing pressure and all that. Uh, they're just it's been tough for the weekenders and that's the the most people are weekend fishermen and there just hasn't been enough good days so that's why we're all fired up so people might say why are david and eric all fired up it's going to be a great weekend it's going to be a pretty weekend so get your boat get out there we're excited we're, we're more excited than you are this should be a very nice week. Hey, anytime you wake up and it's going to be like high, <laughs> low of 58 in the this, morning. This is and then a high of what they're saying, 80, this 79, is, this 80. This is when I like to fish. Hey, y'all, that's like, that's, I mean, that's Cabo weather. That's, and, that's why I can't afford to live in Cabo. Well, there might be a couple people wondering why you're taking me fishing. I had a little mishap with my with my Yamaha four stroke. The... He doesn't have a Yamaha four stroke. <laughs> <laughs> he has a boat, but it's really too big to paddle. My my cylinder, the cylinder froze up in my Yamaha four stroke, so I am without a operational boat right now. So this right. is my So I'm gonna take them fishing. I haven't seen them. Look, y'all, we I really haven't even been here. So Eric's been running the whole show here and I've been here, there, and everywhere, and um, so he gave me four days off. I've remodeled my house, had new floors put in, and of course, what happens? We're getting ready for the show. My girlfriend calls, and we got a water leak underneath the sink. So it's like, oh joy, it's the Money Pit. What was that shit? There was a movie with Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Oh, yeah. yeah, the Money Pit. Everett and John Lewis uh, say hello. Hey, Everett, John Lewis. Any questions, y'all? Yeah, we can answer. Look, we got some time. Throw us some questions. We'll give you five minutes to dish out some questions, and then we're going to call it a wrap. And then we hope to see you at Eagle Point Fishing Camp definitely Saturday and Sunday. I know some of y'all have to work tomorrow, but I would cut off at noon and just come on and go fishing. David and I have a wager on tonight's game. He says the Dolphins are going to win, and I say the Texans are going to win. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm not buying, well, four wins. I'm not buying it. All right. I think I think the Texans are going to do it. We'll see. If I won't stay up, so it doesn't even matter to me. I'll be asleep. Any questions? Yeah, Dave? Dave, David wants to know. David Dunn. Hi, David. Thanks for joining us on the show, buddy. We appreciate it, and we're glad you're watching. And he says, "Do you think this tide is going to drop by Sunday?" Yes. yes. Do I think it's going to be abnormally low? No. But do I think we'll turn we we'll return to more of a normal tide level? Yes. Yeah, the tide right now, David, is about eight inches lower than it was yesterday, if if not more. Ah, it's a foot. Maybe a foot. Yeah. And then I, I agree with David. The tide's gonna be back down to normal, if not below normal. Yeah. And we actually, David, had somebody that that reminds me of a gentleman had a question of fishing and operating their boat in low tides in Galveston Bay and wanted us to talk about that. Can you touch on that briefly? Well, it depends on what he means low. No, his question was low. So like a normal low? No, like a like abnormal in, like low. In the, like in the winter. So like in a dead winter, it's actually if you can find a ramp that's usable that you can get your boat in and out safely, it's a really, really good time to learn the bay and to look for structure that you may not have ever noticed because some of it will be exposed, some of it will be a lot shallower. So you can run your boat in a low tide. You've got to be careful. Give, a, give a number. A number of what's too low? Yeah. I mean, give a number of what you think, in your opinion, is safe You know, for them to go out and do that. Mm, three foot 
below normal you could run your boat. After you get down to about three foot below normal, then you then you can run your boat. But then what the problem is, you're going to have problems where you're going to put your boat in the water and where you're going to retrieve it at. Okay. So that's what happens. You get you get into a situation to where what's usable ramp and what's not usable ramp. When the tide's below three foot below normal, a lot of places aren't usable. I disagree a little bit with Dave, and that is... You know, more like that two and a half, two, two and a half. But you're running a deep V boat, a little different. Not really. Not really that different. Yeah. My boat doesn't draft a lot of water. More than mine. It does, but my opinion, and in, in this is relative in that when we talk about fishing the fronts, because I don't want to misrepresent, the majority of the time we're talking about fishing the front before it and after it if you get out if you get out in the water before the water is allowed to get back into the bay and you go out there in something three four foot below normal i personally think that you're really putting yourself in danger you got to be really careful if you know the bay literally like i mean you know it know it know it and, and hopefully there hasn't been something lodged, you know, underneath the water, some sort of uh, pipe that's been been brought up by a, a shrimp boat or by an oyster boat. And then this, this, this pipe, see these pipes really are supposed to be submerged under what, uh, excuse me. On the bottom. They're supposed to be under the bottom. So a shrimp boat or an oyster boat is not supposed to be able to pull it up, but a lot of these lines that have been abandoned if they're brought up by accident and they just throw it back over and that help me they're out under. that that they're pipeline under. that pipe is not that far submerged and now you have water that's three foot below normal you got to be really careful. you got to know where you're running you need to be really careful you just got to be really careful yeah safety is the number one thing but i guess the an, another situation is if you go out and the tide's already low and you're not watching the tides and it can drop even lower on you you may not get back to where you ran yeah we've that had we, we've had more than a handful of boats launch somewhere else and then, come and then have to, to come over here to get their boat out right so you need to need to just you just gotta watch it okay uh they want to talk about Cheater rigs, I mean a cheap cheater. Have you heard of this cheater jigs? Yes, with the little number ten. I'm not familiar with that. Tom. Yeah, you, good, good question. You have a jig head, basically, uh -huh. and you have a soft plastic on it, and you have your hook comes out here, and then you take another ten treble hook, and it comes up and it, and it hooks into the back of the okay of the of the lure, and so yeah, I mean. Do I, would I use them? No, because I've not? been, because I've hooked myself with that cheater jig. I mean, it's just like, have you ever used a ceviche jig, rig, no. to catch bait? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you don't. Hey, yeah, guys, look, us. if you ever see me with a lure, it's going to be a spoon it's, yeah. or a so, can wiggler. Yeah, they were, you know, it, me, they were. Me, me and Woody, me and Woody used to fish. When we had, when we didn't have bait, it was, I mean, a spoon. Right. Or Kelly Wiggler. And there you go. All, I don't know where all this other fancy stuff came from, but well, I'm not buying into it. I haven't seen a cheater jig in a long time. But, no, people do use them. People but do what's it effective for? Catch flounder on a short bite. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's, that's right. a good... Because a flounder typically will... Sometimes they'll just grab the tail of a, of a plastic and never get the hook. And you can reel them in, and they'll hold it on, and as soon as you get the net, they go... That sounds reasonable. <laughs> they, and they let go. Hey, Paul. So, sure. Hey, yeah, Paul agrees. Yeah, the main thing is, Paul, like we talked about, and it sounds like you're on board, you just you just really got to be careful. The thing about the bay that my grandpa used to tell me, which makes a lot of sense, is the, the thing about the bay is what was – because he – my grandpa was on the water his basically his entire life, and – he even ran a crew boat for a short period of time, had, had a Gulf, Gulf shrimp boat, had multiple shrimping boats, but uh, bay boats, that is. But he always would tell me, 
that what you ran over minutes ago or hours ago or last week, you know, it's not like a road where you can see in front of you. And I still run over stuff. You know, what, what you ran over with a boat changes immediately after you go over it. And, and that's what makes water dangerous. So, you know, you can be on a lake or the bay. God forbid you're close to the Houston Ship Channel and a, and a barge throw off like a rope or something. I mean, who knows? You don't know. I mean, we David and I found a, a big tree out there. Oh yeah. Uh, and then and then just the other day, a guy came, a guy that lives down the street said he had about a sixty foot tree a and sixty wedged foot, in his dock. He has a sixty foot tree underwater, wedged up, in wedged his, up under his pier. Yeah. And then after one of the after Harvey, David and I found, and we do not know where this is at. We still don't know where it's we at. We found um, a day marker. What, what would you call it? A day marker, range marker, a range marker with about. 100 foot pile well more like 60 foot pilings and we the don't top even, of a range we, we, we don't even know where it's at i mean so who knows where that's at yeah i don't know where it's at i haven't found it yet thank god so you know there's just limited resources you know by the state to go out here and and, and clean things up and, and they're not going to do it so you know the cleanup is more done by the people using the water than anyone else correct so let's wrap it up buddy okay bud look any like we said any questions we appreciate y'all participating you can email us at uh, eric at galveston bay fishing show or you dot com. like first of all like our youtube page like our youtube show at galveston bay fishing show please subscribe to the channel facebook galveston bay fishing show you can always please go to Eagle Point Fishing Camp Facebook page. You can like it there. Like us everywhere, folks. And um, we'll see you next week at the Galveston Bay Fishing Show. Live from Eagle Point Fishing Camp. Been Great. here since 1929. Great job, David.